boost it, and let's go launch it. Launch it, let's go. We get these kicks. But the handling is secure, it's sharp, it's stable. We got this beautiful blue color. Welcome back everyone. Today we have a 2021 Audi A5 Sport back on our channel. As always, we're gonna take a look outside and inside of the car, take it for a quick test drive, do some zero to 60 draggy tests, and I will share my impressions with you. Let's get her started up. There's been quite a few Audi A5s, S5s, and RS5s already on the channel. So I do enjoy driving this car. I own one of them myself. I had a 2021 S5. So let's check her out. We got this beautiful blue color. And I've always really liked the way these A5s look. They, they look pretty simple, but very stylish and elegant at the same time. They have nice lines. Everything is just very sharp with taste. It's hard for me to even describe like what I feel about the design because from some angles it looks very basic, but from other angles it looks very strict and elegant and that's what I like about it. It's got this kind of mature design to it and just the way the doors close here, it's so satisfying. The way the doors here close, like when you close them, they have this nice sound to them. Well, let's hop in the back. So hopping in the back here, we have a climate system here for the passengers. And I will say it does feel a little bit tight in the back here, but it's still very comfy. Like I'm 6'2", and I still have plenty of space above me, like where the head, like for the for the roof, and a lot of leg room, and a lot of shoulder room. So really good. We've got our cup holders, all this stuff. Materials feel solid, high quality. The wood is great. Everything is soft touch. I love the black headliner. It just feels great on the back here. We have a power lift gate, a good size trunk, and it goes up really high so it's easy for you to put things in and then you're not gonna hit your head. We have our spare tire right here. A lot of useful cubbies. Pockets, I meant to say. Nope, actually nope. There we go, I gotta redo this. Uh, let's redo this. All right. Let's look at the engine. All right. The Audi, Audi, the Audis have this cool little buzz. It's like dee deen, dee deen, dee deen when you walk out of them. Alright, so jumping inside of here. Right away we are greeted to a comfy cabin. A comfy but a pretty small cabin. So it's not it's not a lot of space here, but it's still comfortable and you have a good amount of shoulder room, some headroom, but it is to the tighter side. We have our sunroof here, our cubbies, a USB port here and a USB port here. This is adjustable, which I love about Audis, is how ergonomically pleasing these cars are that they literally have incredible ergonomics for what they are we have our little ipad as some some reviewers call called it a slap on ipad well i think it's it could be done a little bit differently like you know adding the physical controls here i still think this is a great implementation it is this specific car does not have the virtual cockpit so there's not much to show about that um we have the dual climate, 
auto start stop we have different drive modes we'll stay in comfort for now for some reason the tire pressure light is on so we're probably not gonna go to our full potential in terms of the uh, draggy test but we will still try to get a nice good zero to 60 in there the materials here are good everything is solid we have nice feeling plastic everywhere you know leather i love the wood it's it's a really nice tone and that quattro badge <laughs> this is cool So personally, myself, I've owned a 2021 Audi S5 in turbo blue. That was a phenomenal car. It was one of the, my favorite cars that I've ever owned. But there were a few things that you gotta know about these cars. And first, first and foremost is these windows, they're frameless. So in the winter time when you're parking and everything freezes up, be careful opening the doors because you can mess up your window. I mean the glass. Another thing, if you're buying this car, make sure to get the tire and uh, rim protection package because these rims, especially in the S line and the S models, they have really low profile tires and they will damage when you hit a pothole. Another thing is you gotta get the car PPF wrapped because the paint here is very soft in Audis in general. So all these chirps and rocks, they will be visible on your paint pretty soon. This, this plastic here is very good, but it can get scratched up fairly easily. So also get a film protection on it if you can. If you're planning to keep this car for six plus years, it doesn't really matter, I feel like. You know, scratches are still gonna be unavoidable. Now, one more thing that I gotta mention, the seats. These seats are actually more comfortable than the S5 slash RS5 seats. They have more shoulder room and they just feel more plush. The ones in the S5 and RS5 are sportier. They're like racing bucket seats. They feel great as well, but they are not even close to being as comfortable and relaxed as these seats. So this is the better option if you're planning to go on uh, longer trips per se. So we have a, almost a full, a full tank at this point. It's showing 470 miles worth of range, which is stellar for a four cylinder of this class. Um, another thing that you gotta also know about these cars is that they will differ from their rear wheel drive counterparts in the way they handle at higher speeds. So at lower speeds, they feel super grippy, amazing, but at higher speeds, there may be some oversteer that you will, I'm sorry, understeer that you will face just as a heads up. And the gas pedals. These are literally Volkswagen gas pedals. I had the same pedals in my Volkswagen Arteon. So there, there are some parts about the car which will resemble if you W to you. Now the handling here is an impressive. It's glued to the road. As far as the feedback, there is good secure feedback, but it's not anything sporty. So it feels about the same to me at 30, at 50, at 60. It feels about the same way, the same feedback. So it doesn't get like harder to steer. So it's about the same thing. You can pretty much steer it with like a, a pinky if you wanted to. Now this does not come with the 8ZF automatic. This comes with the um, DCT, which is the seven speed dual clutch. And this is the four cylinder version of the car. So we also have the S5, which is 349 horsepower. It comes with the 8ZF and a 3.0 liter V6 engine. And then the RS5 also comes with the 8-speed ZF, but it comes with the 2.9 TT engine, which is also used in, uh, in Porsche, Porsches, or Porsches, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Great performance, plenty of power, absolutely effortless acceleration, I have to say. Uh, it rides ultra smoothly i can feel the bumps just a little bit but i don't feel any speed so i'm just gliding now in the s5 it's also comfortable especially if you get the base rims not the black optics package the ride is also stellar in the s5 but if you do go for the black optics package and the bigger 20 inch wheels 
it will be a stiffer ride, but still not anywhere near as stiff as the RS5. I reviewed the RS5 a few weeks ago. Uh, I will attach the links for the S5 review and the RS5 reviews down below if you want to watch them. They are different kinds of setups, so they will feel much stiffer, like especially the RS5. The S5 feels similar, but a little bit stiffer, and the RS5 feels much stiffer. Um, as far as road trips, I probably would not want to go on a road trip in an RS5 for more than two hours. You can feel every bump in your back. Like you're driving, it's like dish, dish, dish. And especially if you go into RS mode, the suspension becomes like so harsh. It's insanity how harsh it becomes. But this here is an excellent balance. So it feels great to me. It doesn't feel overly stiff. It feels like perfect. And unless you need that extra, extra power, this is more power than you'll ever need. And the best part is you slap a stage one tune on this and you pretty much get an S5 performer right there. So this car with the tune will perform about the same as a stock S5, maybe even quicker on the zero to 60 thanks to the DCT. I've seen all sorts of results across the board. Um, so this car stock, I believe it will do like low, low to mid fives off launch control which we will verify and see what we can do. We got 93rd premium gas in here right now. So the best gas we could put in. Um, and then from idle, I believe it's like around six seconds, maybe in like high fives, low sixes. Now the S5 from idle will do about 5.6 seconds in this kind of weather, maybe five, yeah, five, 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 six. And then from launch, the S5 will do like, around maybe four and a half seconds, 4.4, 4.3, 4.5. There's a lot of factors that will come into play. But off idle, if you floor both cars, the difference is very minimal between the two, at least the 60. So it's not like you're gonna feel a big difference. But look at how well this car picks up. There's lots of power reserve here. It's very maneuverable too, like you can squeeze in everywhere you want. You got the, the paddle shifters here. And what I'd really do appreciate uh, about Audis is they're minimalistic and simple, easy to use design. You have the physical knobs here. You don't have to go through a screen to change your climate settings, which I feel is great. And it's a cozy interior. Like it's a smaller interior, but it's very cozy. Um, the wheel is a good size. Again, it could be a little bit bigger and sportier, but this is not a sporty trim. So this is exactly what it should be in this case. Yeah, so far I've really been enjoying it. Like I could definitely take this car on a long road trip and feel great in it. Now, as far as the things that I don't really like here so far is, like I said, there's a lot of gloss here, which does scratch up easily. And I really would love to have like a physical dial here where I can change the stuff here. That would be so helpful. Otherwise, I don't have any complaints. It's a great, great machine. Oh, and the mirrors. Yeah, they are nice looking, but they could be a little bit bigger, I feel like. But you can still see everything through them, which you need to see. So I, I, I don't have any complaints to add to this car at this point. It's, it's really good. And what's even better is that these A5s, they don't really have much of a delay off the line because of the DCT. Most Audis with the automatics they do have quite a delay when you floor them off the line. But this one does not have any delay. It like barely has a delay, it like goes right away like this. All right, well, we got our draggy connected. Let's do a quick run, see what we get. Let's let the traffic through first. We're gonna reset the draggy and let's go. Oh yeah, punches in so nicely. Oh, 
Okay, 5.93 seconds. Great results. All right, and here we got to the quarter mile. All right, so zero to 60 came in 5.93. That's with no launch control, nothing. So it's only 0.3 seconds away from an S5 on idle. Quarter mile came in at 14.08 at 100.37 miles. That's very impressive. For a 250 horsepower four cylinder with this weight, that's incredible. All right, let's put the ESC to sport. And on the way back, we're gonna do a launch control and see what we can get. But I have a feeling, you know, with this kind of performance right now, we're, we're gonna easily be under five and a half seconds and the nice thing that i love is just how responsive it is it gives you that little kind of like faint pop like faint pop boom yeah oh it's great and it glides like you don't feel the speed at all you can be going super duper fast and you're not going to feel it at all it feels like you're going 40 maybe when you're going way at way faster speeds that's what i love about this It's just such a nice suspension. And it's much softer than the RS5. Yeah, I, I love this car. It feels phenomenal. Let's check out the U-turn radius see what we can do on that let's reset the draggy do a quick u-turn see what we can do so the u-turn radius here is actually about similar to the x3 that i drove maybe slightly worse but still very good all right so let's come to a full stop reset the draggy boost it and let's go launch it launch it let's go get these kicks during the shifts in 5.4 seconds alrighty let's slow down all right so we did 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds verified and then we did the quarter mile at 13.74 which was also valid at 101 miles per 101.06 miles per hour. Again, great times. Great times. So on the S5, you would probably be looking right now in this weather, probably a 1275, a 12.8 quarter mile. Uh, in these specific conditions that we have right now with this DA and this uh, weather. Maybe a 12.7, who knows. But it would be about a second faster off launch in the S5. And then the RS5 in these conditions would probably be around 12 seconds. Maybe a 12.1, maybe something like that. But like a very low 12s number. I was able to get a 11.8 um, in much better conditions. So accounting for the weather and the humidity and the DA, it would be like 12, 12, 1. So it would be about one and a half seconds faster than this car. Okay, so we are approaching the interstate, which we're about to take. I prefer to take all these ramps and comfort modes on these cars for the purpose of the test, because this way you can actually see cars that will lack performance and that don't lack performance and i have a feeling that this will be great in that sense we, we do not even need sport mode here and one thing that i've always noticed about people is that they're complaining oh well this car is not enough to merge you know a good driver will merge with pretty much any car um, of course there will be conditions where faster cars do help with merges and they do make it a much better experience and it's flawlessly easy but if you're a good driver you should be able to predict and coordinate depending you know on on what you're doing because in Europe per se the average car does 0 to 60 in what like 
10 seconds, 11 seconds, some go to 14, like the Fiats, the slower ones. And people there merge just fine, and their highway speeds are just as fast as ours, if not faster. Uh, when I was when I was little, we were in Italy, and we had this uh, friend there, and she had a Skoda Fabia, 1.2 liter. So it's what, like 80, 80 something horsepower. And one time she took us on a trip to Milan in that Skoda, and we were going about 145 kilometers an hour, 150 kilometers an hour. She she would get up to that speed pretty decently. And there was five of us in the car, five in the car. Can you imagine, even with 80 something horsepower, you could do easily 90 plus. And, you're, and people out here are telling me, oh, this car is one second slower from 60 to 130. Now I'm thinking, well, where are you gonna even see that difference? You're gonna need a freaking draggy to tell that difference, let alone know that difference by your butt. No way you're gonna know that difference. And where are you gonna be going 130 on these roads here? Like most states here have a criminal misdemeanor for going above 80 miles an hour. Where do you expect to do like 130? Like seriously, it's a lot of, a lot of, Forza Horizon experts. Oh, this car does 0.3 seconds more. Oh my God. You people need to like chill, seriously, whoever says this stuff. Because I do get these comments from time to time. Oh, this is slow. It's not slow. This is faster than, you know, many of the cars out there. Like even this, let alone an S5, an RS5 or whatever. These cars are very fast and they can move. And if you think you have 500 horsepower and somebody guns their car next to you, like from here, oh, good luck trying to play catch up because you're gonna need a good triple speed to, to catch up to them. Like, see if I'm going and I, and I floor it right now. See, this car is way slower than the A5, but it still took me some time to get up to him. A any car here with over 150 horsepower will be just comfortably fine. But let's get back to the subject of the A5. Handling is good. Um, these Audis, when they turn, it feels like their butt is going out a little bit like this for some reason. It's like as if they sl turn and they slide. I don't know, it's just that kind of feeling I got. Boom, like as if the whole car just turns. Um, but the handling is secure, it's sharp, it's stable, but it's not like, overly aggressive it's good it's just good it's very stable and enjoyable so if we are talking about which car to get i would say go for this or the s5 the rs5 the only reason why you would want to go for the rs5 is because of the way it looks and the way it accelerates but you can do that with an S5. You can just get a flash tune and you'll be just as fast or even faster. So to wrap up my summary, um, I've highly enjoyed this A5. I think it's great. Excellent car. It is a little bit on the smaller side, so it does kind of feel small to me personally because I'm used to bigger cars. But it, it's it's really good. I've I've you know I've legitimately enjoyed it. I've really liked this. And I would definitely say go buy a car like this, this or a 4 Series or a 3 Series, you're, you're going to be happy with either of the cars. But this is definitely softer than a 4 Series, I think, at higher speeds especially. Now, performance-wise, they are very close too. This is definitely a go buy one. Um, and if I was selecting the ideal one, I'd probably look at an S5 in this class. I still think it sounds the best in a just has the best balance of everything. It has the handling, it has the sound, the acceleration, the launch, like a really strong launch. So I would I would probably say the S5 would be my preference. Um, but yeah, this will summarize the test drive. Um, thank you so much for watching everyone. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. And until next time.